Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Learn Live session at Microsoft Build. My name is Aicha Bash and I'm a cloud advocate. Today, we are going to cover two modules from Develop Apps with the Microsoft Graph Toolkit Learn Path. And my colleague Valdek is joining us in the session as well. Hi, Valdek. How are you doing? Hey, hey Aicha. I'm doing great. And yourself? Yeah, I'm doing great too. I'm really excited for Build since last night. I keep watching all these crazy sessions and there are a lot of new features available. So it's really exciting. And now today we have Learn Live Show. So I'm looking forward to start learning together with all of the attendees. Excellent. Okay, so let's start. Let's see what we're going to do today. Um, if you were interested in uh, completing this modules after the session, as you know, we will complete these modules together with Waldeck with you as well. Uh, and after the session, if you're interested in going through by yourself, you can visit ak.ms slash con 061. And uh, this will direct you to the related learn modules. So you can just uh, complete all modules in your own time and you can learn a little bit more details about everything hands on. So, um, what we're going to do today, Waldeck, I know that it's all about Microsoft Graph Toolkit, but um, as you know, we have some prerequisites. Uh, we have some basic knowledge about authentication. We have basic, we, we need basic knowledge about HTML, but these are, these are really all uh, really basic stuff, right? What do, you, what do you say? Exactly, right? So we will show you how you can use Microsoft Graph Toolkit uh, in practice. And for that, we require you just to know a few basic things. So a little bit of no, of 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 like no PhD required. Um, <laughs> we also require you that you know what HTML is, what is basically an um, an HTML tag. That is it. Um, if you would like to go through the, the the module by yourself, we recommend that you have access to a Microsoft 365 tenant. And then in the end. Uh, we recommend Visual Studio Code as your text editor and also Visual Studio Code Live Server so that you can preview the uh, the web app that you will build in browser. Yeah, that's all we require. And by completing these two learn modules from Develop Apps with the Microsoft Graph Toolkit, we will learn a lot in this one hour. So, well, there, what will you, what will we learn all together? Absolutely. So first things first, like we talk about what Microsoft Graph Toolkit is and how to use it in your app um, and also to understand the value that it adds and how it's going to help you uh, basically develop more um, efficiently. Um, also, we're going to show you how you can sign in with Microsoft 365 account to your app using Microsoft Graph Toolkit. And then finally, like once we are past off, because there's always the, the first step you need to um, um, to go through. We're going to show data that's that are coming from Microsoft 365 in your app again using Microsoft Graph Toolkit. Finally, we'll uh, we're going to see how we can change how Microsoft Graph Toolkit components work to adjust them to your app. And in the end, we're going to sprinkle some CSS on them. That's my favorite part. The last part is definitely <laughs> my favorite part. Just adding some sparkles in our app and customizing. All right, so before we jump into the session and start learning more about Microsoft Graph Toolkit, we would like to share with you that this session is not interactive only for me and Waldeck. Just um, post your questions in the chat window and we will get some of your questions and we will try to answer them as much as uh, we can in live session. So let's try to make it interactive. We also have some subject matter experts waiting your questions in the chat window and they're ready to answer all of them. So just try to keep everything interactive and try to do all the session live all together. All right, so are we ready? The introduction. Absolutely. Absol well, okay. and, to and to prove that it is live, we welcome people from um, Spain, Germany, Japan, Ireland, Japan, Australia, Poland, and India. Wow, yeah, that's true. I totally missed those parts. Yes, <laughs> so we are able to read your chat window and we will definitely try to answer all your questions. All right, so as an introduction, I am giving you a scenario where uh, we require, let's say, I am building a web app and I would like to get my emails, my calendar events, let's say my files, 
in the same web app. But let's say, well, like I've never done this before. And uh, as you know, this authentication hassle, adding sign in, calling some APIs, it's kind of too much work for me. Is there any way to do this easily? Absolutely. So as, as you said, like the moment you want to build an app connected to Microsoft 365, or actually for that matter, any service in a cloud, like the first thing you have to do is to authenticate because all the data you create in your work isn't available anonymously, right? Right. Like after all, we don't want everybody out there to read our, our emails, check files and whatnot. So the first step is always off. Now, once we are past that, the next step is to build the request to API. Right, like what data do you want to get and get back? Um, then you need to execute the request. Then you get back an answer, and that answer might be the data that you asked for, but occasionally it it also might be an error. So you need to to handle of all of that in your app. Then finally, once you have the data, you need to show it in your app. So as you see, like for every bit of info you want to show in your app, it's quite a lot of work, isn't it? Yeah, it's definitely a long process of building um, all the authentication, adding the API call, as well as you have to handle the UI. And as you know, uh, there is an easy way to build all these using Microsoft Graph Toolkit. But let's check out what is Microsoft Graph Toolkit first before exactly. we jump into, you know, writing the code and having some fun. So, exactly. What is so Microsoft what Graph is Microsoft? <laughs> I was just about to ask you exactly the, the the same. Yeah, so Microsoft Graph Toolkit provides us um, some authentication providers and also uh, the web components where we can use them to build easy way of authentication and we can get Microsoft 365 directly. So that means by consuming the providers and the components, it makes our lives easier because we don't need to worry about building the authentication from scratch. We don't need to worry about calling Graph API in the background. Components and providers handle all this process um, for us and by, by writing just a few lines of code, which is totally awesome. So Absolutely. in this unit, we will definitely cover what is included in the Graph Toolkit. We will also see uh, how to consume providers and components in real app with some hands-on demos, and we will discover a little bit more by customizing the components and so on. So there's a lot to cover. Let's get started. So overview of Microsoft Graph Toolkit. Um, Valdek, Microsoft Graph Toolkit, as I mentioned, we, uh, pro provides us some uh, web components, which are HTML tags. So how the process works in the background? Exactly, right? So as you can see on the screen, we have the single HTML tag named MGT-Agenda. And when you put that in your app, what you get, you actually get is everything end to end from building up, up, up the request to get, get, getting the right, the right, the right token, issuing the request, getting it back, handling errors, and even showing the data in your app. Just with this, this one HTML tag, Microsoft Graph, Graph Toolkit does all of that work for you. So by default, you get to see this with just this one line of code. Wow, this is incredible. So just adding this uh, one line of HTML in my code, I will be able to get load the data from Microsoft 365 and as well as uh, it's not the only benefit coming from Microsoft Graph Toolkit. We have some other benefits as well. Um, you only focus on your own app, building your own app. And when you use the components and providers, you don't need to worry about the authentication. You don't need to worry about calling Microsoft Graph. As well, you can uh, get data from Microsoft 365 with a pre-built UI. So in that case, you if you don't like, let's say, um, working with the front end, you can just consume the components and it will give you a look and feel of Microsoft 365 experiences. And they're fully customizable. We can customize the components the way you like. Let's say you have a web application and uh, you have a style already in your web app you can customize the components and change the behavior of the data or change the styling of the components the way you like, which is really important for me. <laughs> Perfect. A absolutely. And I mean, like like in every app, like not two apps are exactly the, the, the same, right? So in the end, whatever app you build, you want it to look the way you want it to. 
And with MitoGraph Toolkit, you absolutely have that ability. Yeah, always. It's really critical. So after all this talking, well done. Well, like, when would you use Microsoft Graph Toolkit? Where can we use it? Right. So most importantly, like if you would look for an overview, like like a rule of uh, thumb, like in any web app you you build, whether it's in a web web app you build using JavaScript or React or Angular or Vue or any framework you think of, if it's JavaScript uh, app, you can use Microsoft Graph Toolkit in there, right? So that is just simple thing. Um, Another one is if you build an, an, an extension like a Teams tab, SharePoint web part, you can also use Microsoft Graph Toolkit in there too. And it will use the authentication context that, that you already get in there so that you don't need to do all it by yourself. Um, finally, uh, yeah, it works in any framework. So it's not limited to React or Angular. No, you can use it really anywhere. <laughs> So this is awesome. So if you are a React developer or if you're an Angular developer, you don't have to worry about um, trying to make stuff fit because components and providers work with any framework and also they work with any modern browser. Um, they will definitely give the same behavior in any browser you, you wish to use. And if you would like to use just JavaScript, this will also work fine. And, and you will see in our demo, we will use vanilla JavaScript and it will work fine. So after all these explanations about components, providers, Waldeck, what if I want to, let's say, build an application, JavaScript app, where should I get started? How to load Microsoft Graph Toolkit goodies? Yeah, so basically you load it in two ways, depending on the type of, of the app you want to build. So in this case, what you see first is that imagine that you want to build a single page app that consists basically of single file. So you don't have any built pipeline. You don't use Webpack, Gulp, and NPM. You just have this one HTML mail file. And in there, all you need to do is to add this one script tag that you see now on the screen, and that will load everything that is available in Microsoft Graph Toolkit for you. So you will get components, utilities, providers, everything that it, that is there uh, instantly. Wow, this is incredible. So when I create an HTML file, when I just copy paste this single line of HTML, this will, this will bring me all of the goodies from Microsoft uh, Graph Toolkit, right? This is awesome. Absolutely. So just one line Absolutely. of script. Yeah. What if I want to use package manager? Um, you know, it's really popular in JavaScript world using, let's say, NPM or stuff. How can we load Microsoft uh, Graph Toolkit stuff? Absolutely. So imagine that you build an app uh, using React or Angular where you have a built tool chain with NPM, right? So there is a package on on an NPM, and you install it, whether that's with NPM, Yarn, PNPM, or 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 anything else. You you add that in project, and you get again Microsoft Graph Toolkit available to to, to you, right? And additionally, if you work with React, there is a Microsoft Graph Toolkit package available for React that makes it easier to use Microsoft Graph Toolkit in React because it wraps components that are available as a part of Toolkit in components for React. So that it's easier for you to handle events, um, pass in complex objects and, and whatnot. This is super cool. So if I want to build any kind of JavaScript app, I can load all of Microsoft Graph Toolkit stuff using npm install uh, at Microsoft slash MGT. And if I'm using React, I need to just use MGT dash React. So I will get the I will get some privileges for the components and providers. Let's say I load everything, either using script or I use package manager, but I get all of the Microsoft uh, Graph Toolkit stuff in my app. What's the next step? Off. It's oh, always off, always. isn't it? It's always off. Like yes. You always need to sign into your app first. Yes, so when we have everything about Microsoft Graph Toolkit in our app, of course, the next step is um, building the authentication. And Microsoft Graph Toolkit provides us a really easy and secure way to build this. Again, by using one single line of component. As you see, 
in the screen, we have MGT-login, which is the login component. We can use login component to uh, build the authentication flow in the background and we get the access token, which we need for previous uh, components, such as when you're using agenda component or when you're using people component. So for this step, Again, we will only require one single line of code to build the authentication logic in the background. Also, it comes with a really nice UI with a sign in button. And after that, we, when you log in, when you complete the login process, we will also see the user profile information, such as the user's picture, uh, email address, name, so on and so forth. So, which is really cool doing all this with one single line of code. Absolutely. OK, so when we add uh, the loading MGT as well as adding MGT login component in our app, what's the next step? Adding the provider. Yeah, so, what are the providers? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So like as we said, you can use MGT in many different types of apps, right? And the cool thing is that components that, that, that you use are generic, uh, meaning they work exactly the same way no matter if you build standalone web app if you build um uh, for example a desktop app uh, in electron if you build sharepoint web part or a teams tab components work exactly the same way because there is nothing special about how you code graph the only thing that is different is the first step how do you authenticate and how do you obtain a token and that is ex exactly what authentication prom 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 providers do right they abstract away obtaining the token depending in or for your type of app and then once you're done you're ready to uh, implement your app so wherever you want to authenticate we have a provider for you that's the case right all back that is basically tldr <laughs> yes yes no matter what type of app you want to build we have provider for you yeah but if you don't have the provider you're looking for in this uh, providers, let's uh, let's say, uh, in most of the applications we build with web, we will use MSAL provider, which is Microsoft Authentication Library. Um, if you're building Windows apps, you can use Electron provider, you can use proxy provider if you have authentication, but you just want to use components. Um, as well as if you're building SharePoint web parts, if you are building Teams tabs, you, we have providers for those. But if the provider you're looking for is not available in this list, you can also build your own provider by using custom provider, which is awesome. That makes Microsoft Graph Toolkit available in every environment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so after all this talking, shall we see this in real action? like? Let's get our hands dirty, right? Absolutely. So we have for you a demo where we're going to show you how you can create really simple single page app. We will create a folder files in there. We're going to show you how you can authenticate. We will create an app in Azure AD so that Microsoft Cloud knows about our app. We're going to add Microsoft Graph Toolkit to our app. We're going to initialize the MSAL provider. We're going to log in to our app and see it in action. Shall we? Wow. So, Waldek, this is a long list of bullet points. Just uh, let us know how many lines of code will you write to complete all this? Uh, I'm doubting between two and a half and three, but I mean, we still oh, have wow. another hour for it. So, I mean, we should make it right on time, I think. Yeah, I think so. Okay. The two and a half and three lines of code, it works for us. For an hour. For an For hour. Now. Okay. <laughs> Let's try to do it. Perfect. All right. Excellent. So here we created a folder for, for our app. Let's open it in VS Code. And the first thing that we need to do is to create a file for our app. We're going to build a plain JavaScript uh, single page app. And for that, we will just need one file that we'll name index.html. In there, Let's add some basic code. So for that, we will grab a boilerplate for HTML. That will not do much. It's just really the basics. Let me collapse this one. All right. Um, yeah, there's one more thing that we want to do. At some point, we will need to uh, preview this app 
um, um, in browser. So for that, we'll use, as we said, Visual Studio Code Live Server. And we need to instruct this how to run our app. So for that, let's create a folder named VS Code. In there, create a file name, settings.json. And in there, let's add some settings that will tell a Visual Studio Live Server, Visual Studio Code Live Server extension to run our app on localhost and on this port. All right. With that, we can go back to our app. Now, the first thing that we need to do is always auth, right? And for that, we need to let the Microsoft Cloud, 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 uh, 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 know that we're creating an, an app. So we do that in the Azure portal at portal.azure.com. Altec, do we need in, Azure subscription to do that? Actually, no. So just to create a new app, you don't own, own need, need, need one. Um, if you would want to build an API or you want to build storage, you want to build database for these things, yes. But just to create an app, no, like that part is free. Um, cool. So in here, you can see all services that we have available on Azure. We are currently interested in creating an app, which we do in Azure Active Directory, which we open here. And here from all the options, we pick app registrations. And in here, we're going to create a new app. So let's name our app MGT-AAD app. And we want to be able to use any account uh, in the world to, to be able to, to authenticate in this app. Then we need to put in the URL of our app. As we said, we're building a single page app, which will be available on localhost port 3000. So with that, we are good to go. Three to one, we're creating the app. It should be available. All right, with that, this part is done. So we don't need to do anything else at that stage. Now, the next part is, let's load Microsoft Graph Toolkit in our app. So here one is thing, line. Well, back. Mm -hmm. uh, don't we need to enable implicit uh, flow? So in the past, uh, before Microsoft Graph, to Graph Toolkit version 2.2 that was re uh, released the other week, uh, yes, when you, you would use the MSOL uh, v1 provider, you would need to use the auth implicit flow. Now with Microsoft Graph tool, tool, Toolkit v2.2, which we use here, that is no longer uh, needed. We can now use the uh, Pixie flow, which is safer. So for that, we don't need to enable implicit flow anymore. Awesome, so it is less work for us. Absolutely, and safer too. Awesome. All right, cool. So here we added the one of the two and a half slash three lines of code that we need to add to load Microsoft Graph Toolkit in our app. So that is one. Next one is we need to take care of auth. So as we said for that, we need to instantiate provider. In our case, we're building a single page app. So for that, we will use the brand new MGT MSOL2 provider, and in here it asks me to put in my client ID. Now, what is that, Aicha? So, client ID is available in the app you just registered. If you go to Azure Active Directory again, you will see application ID in the overview. Yes, if you copy that and paste it in MSOL provider, that means now your app knows where to go and check authentication. Now we are connected with Azure Active Directory, and basically our authentication flow is handled by this provider. Perfect. So I guess there is one more thing we need to do, is to actually show some UI in our app. Yep. Right, to actually show the users the option to authenticate in our app, right? Exactly. So I guess that sums it up. Shall we see if it works? If we haven't Let's missed try. anything? All right. So from the command palette, let's choose live server, open with live server. And we're seeing it on port 3000. Let's remove the index from the URL. Sign in. The question is, will it work? We should let's get pop up. There you go. So this is the account that we want to use because we were already in Azure. We are already authenticated. So we, we use the same account to sign into our app. What is this screen? 
<laughs> yes, so um, this screen is basically for your application asking permission to your user because now we are completing the authentication part and your app is asking permission to reach out to user's profile. That means when the authentication is completed, we would like to show users a uh, user profile, such as the user email address, username, and the picture. With that, we will be able to um, see very nice pre-built view after the login. So we don't want to show sign in button again. We just want to change it after login and show the user its own profile. <laughs> yes, and also because I am an admin, I get to choose if I want anybody in my org to use this app or 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 do I want just me to um, 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 to use it? So for, for that, in our case, let's allow everybody to use it and then accept it and three, two, one, and there you go. There is our user signed in. And if we move the mouse over their name and click it, we wow. will see a picture, which we would see if if we we had one. We will see the username, email, and also sign, sign, sign out. So all of that from this one line of code. Wow, it's amazing. You literally wrote three lines of code to build the full authentication as well as it comes with a pre-built UI using MGT login component. And at the end of the login, we see the user's profile, which comes in pretty good uh, looking UI. It is actually looking like a Microsoft 365 experience. And we also have sign out. We don't need to handle sign out and so on. So it is amazing to see we handle all this with literally three lines of code. <laughs> Exactly, right? So you have just seen how we went from empty folder by creating HTML file for our single page app. We set up VS Code so that we can launch live server with the right port. We went to Azure and we created a new app on Microsoft Cloud so that it knows where our app is, what access it has. Uh, we added Microsoft Graph Toolkit to our project with one line of code. We set up MSAL with another. And then finally, we added MGT login UI to our app. And that was the third and the last line of code that our app needed to let, let users sign in with their Microsoft 365 account in our app. So before we move forward, I don't want to miss answering this question coming from the audience. There was a question when Waldeck was writing the code. Uh, it was about when uh, Microsoft Graph Toolkit will be available for Angular. Waldeck. Can we use Microsoft Graph Toolkit in Angular? Yeah, so today you can use already Microsoft Graph Toolkit in Angular or React or Vue or Knockout or anywhere where you, you want to. There is no package available specifically for Angular, but the package that is available can also be used in Angular. So totally Microsoft Graph Toolkit is available for Angular. So you can just try to use it starting from right now. <laughs> Okay. Well, we may, 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 maybe not. Maybe wait another half an hour until we're done. Yeah. Okay. Wait a half an hour and then you try <laughs> yourself. Okay. So we learned a lot uh, about Microsoft Graph Toolkit so far. Let's check out what you learned. Okay. We have some questions for you. Now let's check. You can answer those questions by using the chat window. The first question is about Microsoft Graph Toolkit, of course, what is in Microsoft Graph Toolkit? A, web tools and authentication providers. B, web components and authentication providers. C, web components and properties. D, Windows UI controls. What do you think, Waldeck? Which one is it? Um, so Windows UI controls, no, because we said that Microsoft Graph Toolkit is available for uh, the web apps, right? So I don't think Windows UI controls are in there. What do you think? No. Uh, we didn't mention it at all. Windows UI controls, we didn't mention no. it. Uh, no. What do you think about web components and properties? Well, we have web components, but properties? Kind of sounds properties. odd. Nah, don't think so. I don't think we didn't mention that either. So what do you say about web tools and authentication providers? Well, so we've got authentication providers, but web tools? Microsoft Graph Toolkit isn't really a tool by itself, so I would say no okay so this leaves us with option b which i am seeing from the votes that 
57 percent, 54, 55 percent of the uh, attendees already chose uh, B as an option. Let's see if it is the correct answer. Yes, it so, is. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Web components and authentication providers are available in Microsoft Graph Toolkit. Second question. Where can you not use Microsoft Graph Toolkit components and providers? A in Web Apps, B in Microsoft Teams tabs, C SharePoint Web Parts, D in React only. So we just saw an example from you, Waldeck, uh, showing us the components and providers that are working in a web app, right? Absolutely. So I think it has to be, so A is wrong because you can use it in web apps. And we're looking what for where you cannot B? use it. So B, B, Teams tabs. Uh, Teams tabs are also web apps. So I think that's incorrect as well. I also saw a provider for Teams. So should exactly. be working there, right? Yeah. What about SharePoint web parts? So SharePoint web parts are also built on the, the web stack. So I don't think that that is the right answer. Okay. So I feel like SharePoint uh, is also available because there was a SharePoint provider. What about the last option in React only? We well, also we... mentioned that it works in React, but what about React only? Well, yeah, I mean, and we've been just asked if it works in Angular, and we said it works in Angular. So obviously, it doesn't work in React only. It works also in React and in Angular and in Vue everywhere, right? So I think that that is our answer. So from the poll, we see from the audience, 60% uh, of the attendees answered this as D in React only. Let's see if it is the correct one. Yes. In React only. As Waldek mentioned, Microsoft Graph Toolkit works everywhere. So there is no limitation for us to work with any framework or any browser we like. We can work anywhere, not React only. Okay. There was also another question from, from the audience about can you use Microsoft Graph Toolkit in Blazor? Yeah. Okay. So what do you say? Uh, well, I mean, you can in a sense. But it's a client side tool. So, so you cannot use it in server side bindings in there, but it's a client side portion of it. You, you, you could, right? So you, so you could put it in your views. You could put it, uh, you could pass on the data to it, but that would be about it because Microsoft Graph Toolkit works on the client. Okay. Thanks for answering that. Since we just saw how we can build the authentication as well as how we build the sign in button. Of course, at the beginning, we load everything from Microsoft Graph Toolkit in our HTML app. Let's move forward with the next stage show data from Microsoft 365. How are we going to do that? And what is available in Microsoft Graph Toolkit as components? All right. So, um, as the components in Microsoft Graph Toolkit, we just saw one example, which is login components. We saw one line of HTML tag uh, as mgt-login, but there are more than that. Um, after adding the um, loading all Microsoft Graph Toolkit components and providers, and after adding the provider, we add, as you remember, login component, which acts, gets us the all authentication flow as well as the access token. What if you want to call Microsoft Graph and get other data such as, let's say, um, calendar events, people lists, or files? How are we going to do that? We are going to do all this by using components. And in this part of the uh, session, we will show you a couple of scenarios how you can use components in different scenarios. Shall we start taking a look at the scenarios, Oleg? Absolutely. Let's get to it. Okay. So first scenario, get events from calendar. How are we going to get events from calendar, Valdek? Yeah. So for that, in MGT, we have available component named MGT Agenda. And it does exactly that, right? So it reaches out to your calendar or calendar of a group or a team or calendar of someone else and allows you to show the upcoming events. Uh, in a 
form of a calendar, right? So for each meeting, you will get the subject, the location, attendees, duration, and time, right? And all of that from just this one line of HTML. This is amazing. With one line of HTML, you will definitely get the same result you see on the left side of the screen. And Microsoft Graph Toolkit agenda component handles calling me slash calendar view graph query for you. So you don't need to handle any graph API call at all. So Microsoft Graph Toolkit components handles everything for you. Let's take a look at the second scenario, show tasks from planner. So in this case, we use MGT-tasks, which is another component available in Microsoft Graph Toolkit. With one line of uh, component, we can get exact same result as you see on the left, uh, and we don't need to worry about the UI at all because with one line of HTML, we get the full UI available for us. It handles call and graph, it gets the data, so it is perfect for us. Uh, we can build everything with one single line of code if you want, if you would like to get any tasks from your Microsoft Planner. Hey, and there's also a, a thing I wanted to ask, right? So on the screen, we also see uh, next to the list of tasks, a button named Add. Does that also mean that Microsoft Graph Toolkit allows you not only to get the data, but also to create new tasks? That's right. Um, with this Add button, you can actually handle creating new tasks to your planner. That's right, Voldek. We can use Microsoft Graph Toolkit components to handle other stuff than just getting data. In our case, in our case, in MGT tasks, we can uh, not only see data coming from Microsoft 365, but we, we can create new tasks to our planner as well, which is awesome. And these features are available for different components as different features. And it is amazing. Let's take a look at the third scenario, integrate people search. How are we going to do that? Absolutely. So I guess every app you, you build is centered um, around people, right? Because you need to create a file or you assign a ticket to someone or you need to find people with whom you meet. So it's all about people. And I think that that is center piece. Like you, it's, it's only a matter of time until you will need to look up a, a, a person. And for that, in Microsoft Graph Toolkit, there is a component named People Picker which allows you to pick people. Oh, that's great. So is there any way to, let's say, instead of showing 30 people uh, in the search list, is there any way to limit that? Absolutely. So it comes with a set of settings that you can use to uh, choose how it's going to show people, which people you can pick from. Uh, it, it, it also offers you by default a type ahead. So you, it, will, it will filter available people based on anything you, you have typed already, basically making it really easy for you to pick the right, the, the right, the right person. I assume we will try to customize all of these in the upcoming, uh, upcoming part of the session, right? So. In, in our case, let's try to add some other components in our app too. So we already built our app. We just need to get some data from Microsoft 365. Absolutely. So we will now extend our app from three lines of code to four. <laughs> well, well, that well, sounds like too do. much work. Well, yeah. Uh, but I mean, we still have half an hour left. So um, what, what we want to do is we want to show in our app a list of upcoming events from my calendar, right? And typically for that, like that would take a lot of work because again, you need to authenticate, you need to have the right token, you need to build the URI uh, or the request to API, you need to execute it, handle the response and show it in your app. Let's see how we can do it in single line of code with MGT, shall we? Yeah, let's see it. Perfect. Let me share my screen. All right, so here we are back in our app where we authenticated, right? Now let's add to it a list of our upcoming events. So in here, we will add MGT agenda, and that is really all we have to do. So while I save the app, we saw it reload, refresh, and now we're seeing this screen again. What's with that, Aicha? Yes, great question. So to load our events from the calendar, our app 
requires a permission to access user's calendar. If you would like to see a data coming from the calendar, then we have to give consent to this uh, permission. Otherwise, we cannot show user to um, the, the events and we, we just need to get data with the permission of the user, which is great because nobody can access to our data without our permission. Absolutely. So um, um, again, in this case, let's allow everybody in our org to use our app, accept it, and we see our, oh, why are we seeing it again? We just accepted it. Okay, so um, Microsoft Graph Toolkit components come with some um, UI benefits, such as when we load the events data, as you, as you know, in our calendar, we have multiple events and those events um, we have many people invited as attendees. If you would like to see number of people invited in events, who, who, who is invited in that event and what are their profiles, we have to consent some other permissions like uh, people list. And uh, with that, we will be able to see people information under each and every event coming from Microsoft Graph Toolkit component. All right, I want to see it. So let's accept it. And we can see our events, and there we go. Attendees oh, are yeah. coming through. We can see them. Three, two, one. Is that all? Do awesome. we have everything? Can we can we get so? Is this all? Can we see and see anything else? We can actually. If you hover over any people profile, yes. If you oh, would like wait. to see Megan's again, if you would like to see. Uh, Megan's profile, that means if you would like to see attendees profile, then you have to give permission to people's profile. With that, you will be able to get people pro people's profile details. So if you want to see details for the other colleagues as attendees, you have to consent this too. All right, let's accept this. And we reload and there you go. We So we see now their pictures and if we hover, we get a person card with a lot of info here. So we see the latest emails, we see the skills and experience, we see the contact information, we see the manager. Oh. Yes, yeah, so if you want to see more about people, then you have to give permission, more permission. Uh, a little bit more per more permission definitely. It is all coming with one single component, which is amazing from my side. I don't have to handle any other additional graph call to get all these information for people. Cool. Excellent. Yeah. So looks great. We extended our app to four lines of code. And as we see, we get a lot more data. It's really pretty with the pre-built UI, right, Waldek? Absolutely. Right. So we have we have or you have seen and we showed you how you can go from three lines of code to four, <laughs> see upcoming events in your app, and then for each event get info about its attendees. And for each person get their picture, profile info, where in the in your org they work, with whom they work, what they work on, if you you can and access that, and all of that, all these data and insights coming from just one line of code. This is incredible. OK, so since we completed the real part of work, I think it is time to move forward with some customization. In this uh, se section of our presentation, we will talk about changing the behavior of components using attributes. So how are we going to do that, Valdek? How are we going to change behavior of the components? Right, so there are basically three ways, right? You can change them through attributes you can change them no, so in this case let, let, let let's let's stay stay close on attributes right so in this case let's say we want to show a list of uh, uh folks right and we mm -hmm. have let's say 10 people but on our screen in our app we only have room for five so what you can do is you can use use attribute like show max to limit the list to five and that is basically how microsoft graph toolkit components work they expose attributes that allow you to choose or set up how they work. And there are many of them. So each component ships with their with, with its own set of, of things that you, you can set up to basically make component work the way you need it in your app. 
This is awesome. So can we say that attributes are special for each and every component because components are giving different behavior uh, for each and every different graph call? Absolutely. And what's important that each feature of or each release of MGT um, enhances the things that we can do with them. So like imagine that next version will allow you to choose whether you want to show them horizontally or vertically. I'm saying something, right? So always look for the or check out the docs and see what is available because these things change. And Microsoft Graph took it evolves a lot. Yes, definitely. Shall we see that in our own app by customizing the agenda component? Absolutely. Let's do that. So in our app, we want to um, adjust the our list of events. So we want to show uh, events from particular date for a number of days. And we want to show events that occur on the same date uh, in a group. So how many lines of code do you think we will need for that? One, maybe. <laughs> One. That is really optimistic. <laughs> Let's see. All right. So here is our app. And as we said, we want to uh, um, accomplish three things, right? So we want to ensure that we show events from given date. We want to show events from for number of days and want to show them in a group. So for that, let's adjust our MGT agenda with these three options. And it is actually a single line. You were right, right? So we have beginning date from which we want to uh, show our, our events. Then we have the number of days and we have the group by day. So shall we see if it works? Yeah, let's see it. All right. I'm going to save the app. You can see it reload and there you go. So Perfect. we have now, we have now events in groups, right? So for each one, we see group. We have events for one, two, three, four days. Well, we see three and we set from March 9. Well, we see eighth. What's wrong with that? I'm assuming time zone. <laughs> it's always time zones. If it's, if, if it's not off, it's time zones. You're absolutely right. So this event here occurs just around the midnight in the local time. But in here, for me, it occurs actually on the eighth. So that's exactly why we see that it, that is also on the ninth. So one question, well, that can we use attributes separately? Let's say I don't want to use three of them at once. I only want to group events by day. All right, let's see. All right, so let's remove date and let's remove days. Let's save our app and see if it still works. Three, two, one, and it does, right? So with Microsoft oh. Graph Toolkit, you get to choose which features you want to use, which features make sense in context of your app. So you don't need to use everything. You pick and choose whatever makes sense, sense to you. This looks pretty. I think with one line of code again, we achieve a lot by changing the behavior of the components. I think we see really nice example, and I hope we are moving to the my, my, my favorite part, which is styling the component, adding some sparkles. <laughs> Absolutely. OK, so how are we going to start the components? We can do it through, C uh, through CSS. And in a way, the way it works is that every Microsoft Graph Toolkit components exposes number of custom CSS properties that we can use to change the bits and pieces how it's, 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 it's um, shown. OK, this looks really nice, so that means uh, our components work like just another um, HTML tag. We can use CSS custom properties. And while that is, uh, I'm sure lots of developers will ask that, but does components support light and dark theme? Because I sh I'm sure developers are uh, really looking for a dark theme, which I'm also a big uh, fan of dark theme. Absolutely, right? So. Um... You can imagine that when you build app that supports two themes, it's hard, right? Because you need to uh, basically revert colors, ensure contrast, and change backgrounds and fonts and borders and, and outlines, basically everything. And the cool thing is Microsoft Graph Toolkit allows you to do that too. It supports it for everything that it has in it, and you can do it really easily. Awesome. Let's see it. 
Let's see it in our app. Perfect. So in this demo, we're going to show you how you can style the log login and agenda to match branding. Additionally, to add dark theme in your app. And, and we're going to see it in action. So not just code, but we're going to see it live. Shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Excellent. All right. So here we have our app. And in this case, let's add some CSS to it. Now, that will be more than a single line, but that's OK. So we've done all this work up front. So what we've done, we changed the color of our background to black. We changed padding on login. We changed the color hover, pop-up color, and whatnot. And you can see here that these are all custom CSS properties exposed in this case by login and here by agenda. And as you can see, properties on agenda are prefixed with dash dash agenda, meaning they are specific to this one element. Now, let's see if it works, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Perfect. Three, two, one. And now we can see that background of our app is black, as we said. The colors are changed, but we missed something. Like the heading is now gray because we didn't change it while we kind of put the app in dark mode. So shall we see if we can do something about it? Yeah, let's try to use dark mode, dark theme for components. All right. So let's change our app to add dark theme. And you, you do that by adding a CSS class named MGT-Dark. And you can put it on any element, and whatever is inside that element will be run in the Microsoft Graph Toolkit dark mode, right? So in this case, we, we, we put it on body, which means the whole app. We save it, and we can see that now the color is white, or the text is white, meaning it, is, it, it gives us a higher contrast, right, to the uh, the background, which may 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 makes it it easier to read. So one question, all that great demo. Uh, one question from the chat. Uh, one person is mm -hmm. asking, can you apply your organization's CSS styling to the components? Well, that is exactly what we have done here, right? So we change the colors and UI, and if they allow you to, you could. Um, you could apply your own font, right? So there are different things that you can change in MGT. And the best way for that is always to check the, the docs because what you can change also uh, um, evolves over time. So it's always best to see what's supported whenever you use MGT in your app. That's perfect. There is another great question I was about to ask and I also forgot it is in uh, the chat window. What is the best mm -hmm. practice to have the consent screen, but avoid having it constantly nagging the user in their uh, first interactions with the components? So basically, is there any way to show all of the permission requests at once in Microsoft Graph Toolkit? Absolutely. So as we've seen, when we added agenda to the page, we got a single prompt to get access to events then another one to get access to attendees, then another one to get their picture and profile, and then another one for the person card. So like that wasn't a great experience. And the way you can address that is here on your provider, you can add another attribute named scopes. And in there, you, you uh, put in a comma separated list of the scopes that you want to request up front. So you can say user read, you can say calendar read and whatnot. Right. And then whenever the app will load, this will be the first set that your app will ask user to consent. Now, which scopes you actually need? Again, we list all of them in our docs. So based on how you build your app, whether you put here uh, agenda or people picker or task, you will need a different set. So based on that, always check the docs, which scopes you actually need for that first experience. Which is awesome. We don't need to handle permissions step by step. Uh, if you want, you can handle all of them at once. Ask your user everything at once and you're good to go. All right. So we saw a great demo with adding authentication and then we load Microsoft Graph Toolkit components providers. Then we add the login component to create a really nice login experience. After that, we load data from Microsoft Graph to we load data from Microsoft 365 agenda by using the agenda component. Then we customize the behavior of the component 
Also, we style it a little bit the way we like. I think well that we learned so much. Let's check what our attendees learned. Another note. Absolutely. And promise this is the last one. <laughs> <laughs> How can you change the behavior of the components? A using uh, attributes, B using CSS, C using providers. Which one do you think? Well like. So if I look at the answers, uh using providers, no, because providers are for auth and here we're talking about behavior of components so i wouldn't say it's c okay so i don't think either because we use providers for the authentication purposes i saw you use mm -hmm. uh, amsol provider uh, what do you think about css because i saw you customize some stuff using css right but css we use it for presentation not the behavior so css are for presentation for behavior is something else. Okay, behavior, you mean the way we get the data from Microsoft 365. And the way we show the data and so forth and um, and so on, yeah. I see that 88% of our attendees answer the question as A by using attributes. Let's see if it is correct. Would that be the right answer though? Okay, yes. So it is. Definitely it is attributes. You can customize, change the behavior of the components using attributes. Wow, we learned a lot <laughs> in one yeah. hour. So to sum up, I think uh, we saw how easy it is to consume Microsoft Graph Toolkit components and providers. We saw how we can get data uh, from Microsoft 365 using uh, components and providers available in uh, Microsoft Graph Toolkit. Also, we saw uh, the way how we can consume the components and providers, which is everywhere you want. We can use any JavaScript framework and we can still consume uh, components and providers. In the last step, we also experienced how we can customize uh, the behavior of the components, plus you saw how to style them the way you like. So that's a lot, right, Waldek, well, for one hour? It is. It is, right? So I guess there are two things left. Where people should should go to if if they want to go through the, the lab by themselves? And two, is this the only talk at uh, le, 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 or live? Great questions. Okay. If you want to try these modules by yourself, you can go to akdms slash con061. This will direct you to modules we completed and you can try to complete those modules by yourself at home and you can um, see there are step-by-step -step, uh, instructions for you available. And of course, as Valdek mentioned, this is not the only Learn Live session available. Um, there are a lot of other Learn Live sessions available. Uh, you can check out akdms slash learn live, then you will see um, instructors completing learn modules together with the audience just like this one so with that shall we answer some questions we have two minutes left definitely 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 so let's be be fast about it. so the one is can we authenticate for everybody ahead of time so that an end user never sees a consent request okay i think this is a great ssl question would you like to go for that absolutely so um, as you've seen, there was a consent, like me being being an admin, I, I had a choice whether I want to allow everybody in the org to use the app or just me. If I will enable it for everybody, meaning I will give my admin consent for the app, everybody in the org will be able to use it without seeing that prompt. Okay, so I'm getting the last question uh, from the chat. Can we customize these components in any way? I expect we can simply uh, add a class for uh, styling, but what about extending the components? Definitely you can. Uh, it's not only attributes and CSS available for the components. You can use templates. Also, you can use events, properties. All of them are available. We just completed two modules in Learn module and in, in this learn path, we have four modules in total. If you complete the full path, you will see that what else is available and totally you can extend the way you use the components and you can leverage 
um, a, a lot more uh, by using templates, by using events, properties. There's a lot more available than what we show in this one hour session. All right, with that, shall we close, Valdek? I think we already show a lot. Definitely. So we, yeah, we encourage you to take the learning path and get back to us with any questions or, 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 or feedback. Yes, exactly. Thank you so much all joining in this session. We will look forward to see you in other sessions. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye.